Okay, we're back working on the shock mounts. Um, I've got this pulled off the buggy now. The next thing I'm going to do is I cut a block of wood out of oak. That's the thickness of the top of the shock, plus about eh, almost an eighth of an inch. Give it some wiggle room. I'm going to put that there. And then so the shock is a double shear, I'm going to cut a piece of metal. I made a template here. So next thing, cut a piece of metal in there, and then I'll weld that into it. So it'll be a basically a double shear shock mount. So let's trace this to metal and uh, get it fit in there. I got it traced out. One thing I do want to cover that I forgot to cover in the other video, when I started making this top plate here, I was going to attempt to make it out of 3 16 but I realized probably been harder, probably would have been overkill, so I ended up using an eighth inch plate for this top piece, which I think is fine. It's just kind of supporting this. It's gonna be fully welded to the frame there, and that's 3 16 so I didn't feel like I needed to make it 3 16 so I just left it at an eighth, but this plate is 3 16 so both, both of the shock mounts are 3 16 Okay, I got that plate, fits in there nice and tight. I went around and marked it so I know where to grind it. Next thing I'm going to do is pull that off. That's where I can I'll grind it to clean the weld up. And then I'm also, I need to finish weld all of this first on the inside. So I'm going to do all of that. And I think because this is so big and it's going to be so much weld on it, I'm worried that it could kind of when I weld it, it can come in or go out. So I think I'm going to weld this to a plate or at least put some braces on it when I weld it to hopefully keep it from stretching or moving as much. So that's the plan. Okay, what I'm doing for this, I just put down a piece of paper and I kind of traced out an outline around the whole thing. As I start welding this, I can use this for the guide to make sure that it's not shrinking. I can just kind of monitor it as I go and catch it before it gets too far. Because sometimes you weld stuff like this and it can, it can bend on you real quick and get out of shape before you know it. So I just want to be able to monitor it because it's kind of a lot of weld for the size of the piece. So I just kind of play it safe, see what happens. Okay, what is the back side of this? I'll flip it over and show you, but just on that, you can see this has moved out a little bit on the edges. So just that one weld across there has caused this to spread slightly. No big deal, but that's why I wanted to keep an eye on it. Next thing we're gonna do is I've got my spacer. I drop in, that's the space for the shock, so I'm going to tack this in, which will help keeping it from spreading too, and I also want to drill my hole in this before I fully weld to make sure it's completely lined up. Alright, the other thing I did for myself for Black Friday, I have all these drill bits that probably 90% of them are dull, and I went ahead and ordered a drill doctor. Never had one, I've usually just bought new bits, but I'm tired of buying the new bits and they're getting more and more expensive, so... I'm going to give this a try and see what happens. Okay, I took all my drill bits. It took me about an hour to get them all. But at first, I didn't know how to, I wasn't using this right. I got impatient. And I sharpened the bit and I did it completely wrong. But it drilled right through the metal, no problem. It just didn't have the right taper on the point. But it did, did work. Once I figured out how to use it correctly, I went through and sharpened every bit that I have. So, every single one of these has a new tip on it. So, we'll find out how they work here shortly. But they're all, I got a few more that I can get to, but for the most part, I got them all sharpened. So, we'll see how well the drill doctor does. Okay, now I'm going to be testing out the new sharpened drill doctor bit. And I'm using the wood inside as a guide to get me through. So, we'll see if the drill doctor can do it or if we're going to have to file the malpractice suit. So, hopefully. Hopefully we get through this. Feels like it's cutting through like butter, but can't see, so I don't know. Okay, it cut right through that. I'd honestly say that probably cuts better than when it was a new bit, so... 
I have to say, I'm happy with that. Now I'll test it with a shock, just to make sure before I move forward and weld it. Okay, it goes on there. This is backwards, this piece we could turn the other way, but if it's on there, it's good. Okay, I left some wiggle room, that way I can adjust the shock left or right if I need to. And I'll use washers inside there to fill up that space, but looks like it fits just fine, so we can weld it up now. Okay, I put some tack welds in there before I fully weld it all the way around. And just to make sure, because I have so much time in this piece, I really don't want to screw it up, so it's a good time to come over if you're working on a piece like this. Make sure it still lines up. I'm still good, but I just want to make sure because I'm going to take my time on this piece because it took me a long time to make it and I don't want to screw it up at this point. So it's always cautious, better to be cautious at this point. Take your time and get it right. You only got one chance to do this right, so might as well get it right. Okay, what I've done is I've tack welded it to this plate. Hopefully keep it from moving when I weld it. I'll keep the ends from moving, but then now the inside could wobble, but the ends will be the same. But hopefully I'm going to take my time and hopefully I think I'll be okay. I'm just being overly cautious. All right, got it welded up, sanded down. Looks pretty good. Not perfect, but good enough. I'm gonna break it off the uh, little spacer here, test it on the pattern, and then I'll test it on the buggy. Okay, here we go. All right, looks like we're successful. Didn't warp it, still fits just fine, so. Now, before I tack this one on, I'll move on to the other side and get the other side caught up to this side. And then I'm gonna probably do one more thing to this before I weld it on. Okay, now I'm working on the other side. I just untacked it from the other side, but this is the pattern that I had for this part on the other side. So, put it on here. I just had to trim just a little bit off the edge and just a little bit off that corner right there. So. I passed the symmetry test, so both sides are more or less the same, so that's a good thing. Now I can cut this plate out and finish the passenger side. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to weld on some washers on each side, 3 16 washers on each side of the hole, just to make the bolt holes more secure. That'll make it over a quarter inch in between there for the bolt, so it'll just help hold the bolt. Just make it more secure, stronger, more durable. So it's the last thing I'm going to do, and then they'll be ready to tack on. Okay, got it almost ready to tack in. Got the washer on it. That's good. Looks like I got the extra space there now, so it's a lot stronger. I need to finish well before I tack this in. I need to weld around here. Weld around there, just make it easier before I put this on. So that'll be the next step. Okay, I got it tacked on this side. I welded half of that bar and half of that bar. I lined it up, it lined up with all real good with all the registration marks, but I only tacked it. I'm not gonna fully weld it. I'm putting enough weld on it right there. You can see a weld and one there, enough to hold its own weight. But I got a little excited, a little ahead of myself. What I should have done is tack this one on, went to the other side, I got that one. These bars and all the welding I did, it moved a little bit, so even though I was on my marks after this one was on and I tacked the other side of the marks, it was off about a little over a quarter of an inch. So it would have been easier to adjust that one a little bit, and adjust this one a little bit to get them to meet in the middle. But I had to move that side. I got it worked out, but I had to really work on the other side to get it to match this side. And I pulled my measurements, one from this bar up to the top, which is not great because these bars could be different from side to side. So I tried to use my mount here on the front because that's a fixed location. That's going to be the same on side to side. So I made sure 
both sides were square with that square and triangulated so it's within it's less than an eighth of an inch off now so i can live with it so here's the other side and you can see like there's an old registration mark and i had to make a new one and they're even worse here they had to move quite a bit there's a mark and there's one so but it's on there and it's same as the other side now so that's all that matters that's all the wetting I'm going to do on these for mock-up. What I'm going to do now, I want to brace these tubes because the force will be coming straight up on this, but I also can tend to push in on it. So I'm going to brace this somewhere down here in the chassis and triangulate all this. That's what I'm going to start next. Another trick I learned over the years, this is my down tube. It doesn't look like it, but I've already coped it. You can see on both sides. These cups sometimes are difficult to get them, but the trick is you only have to do it once because I can wrap this paper around it and I'll mark it. And I'll cut this out and then I'll turn this paper inside out because it's the reverse image for the passenger side. I wrap this paper around the other tube and I'll be able to trace it out. And I'll basically have the same tube for both sides. I always leave them a little big because from side to side it's never exactly the same, but it'll definitely get me in the ballpark. All right, this is the pattern we went up it with. Now I just need to wrap it around the tube and then I'll trace it. Okay, now I've got it marked out. I say this is the reverse image of the other side, so it should be kind of within the ballpark, I hope. All right, I got my shock tower support tubes mocked in now. I'm going down to this bar here. That's kind of a dead tube, so this is going to go from here down to the swing arm connection. You can see where there used to be a tube there. I had to remove that one, but I'll connect these two together so it'll be triangulated. So should be strong. That should support this enough so it doesn't flex inward. So it's probably overkill, but that's what we got. Okay, here's the passenger side. I've got it mocked up now. I've got tack well at the bottom and at the top. So this side should be set. I got a little over half an inch of clearance. Um, now I'll move it over to the other side, tack the other side. Then I still have to make clearance underneath on the uh, mount right there on the other side before it'll have room to go up and down. But almost getting ready to put it under its own weight. Okay, here's some mock-up fun. See if you can figure out the problem. Yeah, the bolt's not going to come out. So I should have had that bolt turned the other way when I mock it up, because now this is welded in. It won't move, so I'm going to have to cut this bolt off in order to pull it out. So, Oh well, that was fun. Shit happens. Woohoo! Yeah, nice. All right, I cut the bolt, got the shock out, but... Oh, great. Success. Okay, here's where we're at at the end of the day. I got both shocks on. They're both mounted. Um, basically, I'm ready to put the tires on and let it down under its own weight. But it's the end of the day and I'm really tired, so that's going to have to wait until tomorrow. Okay, here's the other side. Alright, tomorrow morning, I'll jack the rear end up a little bit. Enough to get the wheels on, get both wheels on, and then uh, we'll drop it down and see what happens. Well, guess what? It's not tomorrow. I couldn't wait. I found my second win, and I got the tires on it, got it jacked up, getting ready to let it down. Let's see what happens.
There it is, on its own weight. Alright, that's going to wrap up the buggy for this year. Uh, I met my goal of having it on the ground under its own weight and movable and steerable, basically a rolling chassis. I met that goal, which is really good, so I'm pleased with that. And the month of December, it just kind of gets too busy to really concentrate on anything on the bug, so I'm done working on it for now, but we'll pick back up in January. I have my to-do list. I know exactly what I'll be doing. I will put out probably two videos. I bought some new tools and products and things like that, so I'll do some product reviews. I've already filmed those, I just haven't shared them. And some of the things I've, I've used, so I've had time to deal with them, so I know how good a product they were. Now I've had more time with them, so that'll get posted. And I'll probably do, I wanna do like a, uh, sort of like a shop tour, but I wanna do my workspace the way I have it laid out. Maybe helpful to some people if you're building things in your shop. Uh, I have, hope, it's kind of efficient, I think it's efficient workspace, but I'll, I'll share that with you. And, I've bought a lot of things for my engine and my transmission, so I'm gonna do a video on that. So that'll be getting rebuilt in probably January, February. Uh, but I've got a lot of new new parts for those and I'll share those with you in the video as well. So just wish for everyone a happy holidays and uh, we'll see you at the first of the year.